Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Canon 110ED20. Maybe 2.0. Not sure. Anyway, this was introduced in 1977. Um, the date range, it can imprint the date, starts at 78. So it might have just been at photo shows or something like that. This is a really well specced 110 film rangefinder has a 26 millimeter f2 lens uh, it's equivalent to about 52 millimeters on 35 millimeter uh, frame size it's five elements in three groups close focus is two feet about 0.6 meters um, it's aperture priority and this slider right here uh, is your uh, aperture selector. It's 2, 4, 8, and 16 with the click stops. I think it'll do intermediate, but they're pretty tiny steps, so intermediate values would be pr pretty hard to get anyway. Uses a cadmium sulfide sensor for the uh, aperture priority electronic exposure. The shutter is uh, electronically controlled. It's stepless. It goes from two seconds to one one thousandth of a second. I've read that it'll go considerably longer than two seconds, but I have not tested that myself. There's no bulb mode, but it does have a uh, cable release socket. It's two seconds or longer. That's pretty long, and you want to use a tripod and a cable release. It runs on a uh, six volt battery. The PX28, this is a PX28L, the uh, lithium or 4SR44 or 4LR44 for the alkalins. Or you can do what I did. This battery actually died. I actually stacked four LR44s, put a little bit of uh, console tape around them, and they work just fine. There's a battery check function on this side where it has these wheels for setting the day, month, and year if you're doing the date imprinting and to turn date imprinting on you go to that uh, down position and then there's a momentary switch position where you just pull it down and that's your battery check that lights up one of the LEDs in the, in the viewfinder. The lens cover is the on off switch with it anything but all the way over where you line up these two white dots um, it locks the shutter button so you got to make sure you're clicked all the way over and then it's enabled it, this one's predecessor had a uh, fastest shutter speed of a 500th of a second and had no uh, mechanical shutter speeds this one the 20 or 2.0 uh, goes to a thousandth of a second and one thing that's interesting there's a little switch down in the battery chamber so you have to actually pull the cover to the battery chamber off but if you do that it's not pressing on the switch and you get a manual shutter speed let me unlock it here a manual shutter speed of 1 125th of a second you open the back with this little tab here next to the viewfinder window and you just drop in your 110 cartridges. The predecessor to this just uh, assumed ISO 80. This one has a little switch here where if the uh, 110 cartridge has the high speed tab, which they never really defined, it was just high, low, whether it had the tab sticking out or not. Anyway, this camera, if it senses the tab, it's ISO 400, the slower speed film, uh, if it doesn't have the tab to push that switch, it's still set to ISO 80. Um, ISO 100 works just fine, though. In the viewfinder, if you have a battery in it, which I don't right now, there is a red LED that tells you um, that you're going to be overexposed, so you'll need to stop down. And then there's a yellow LED, um, which is a slow shutter warning, so you can either open up or use flash. Um, it's a pretty nice viewfinder. Um, if you have it enabled with this switch, 
it'll show your uh, date settings in the viewfinder and it has two different sets of parallax marks over here on the right um, one is for if you're at a meter and the other one is for if you are at the closest focus uh, 0.6 meters about two feet um, this is your focusing knob this little slider here it's kind of nice because it has feet meters and little uh, portrait group mountain infinity pictograms but you really don't need it because the rangefinder is really nice, really accurate. It's a nice bright yellow square patch. It works really, really well. Um, it has a hot shoe. That's pretty sweet because I hate it when I run into what's otherwise a decent camera, but it's set for flash cubes or magic cubes or flip flash bars or something like that. So this has just a normal hot shoe. And it has a sensor in the shoe, so if anything is in, inserted into the shoe, whether it's the flash, or this guy also has a flash extender to get it up away from the axis of the lens, for red eye, I presume, um, this guy sets down to 1 one thirtieth of a second. Now, I don't know if that's an electrical switch or if it's mechanical, so I don't know if you get 1 thirtieth of a second for flash without a battery. I have not tested that yet. On the bottom you get a standard uh, quarter inch tripod socket and then the winder which is uh, that's it one whatever you call that one push of the winder and you've advanced to the next frame. So this is a really nice camera for being a 110 camera. You know, the sensor is tiny for film, um, but really it's about the same size as a four-thirds or micro four-thirds camera sensor. So, you know, as long as you're using a pretty fine-grained film, you'll be okay. Um, my test roll in this, I had another roll in the freezer of the dreaded Lomo Peacock slide film. They call it the X-Pro and they recommend cross-processing it. I don't have any E6 chemicals right now, so I did cross-process it um, using some C41 chemicals. And honestly, it's grainy, but it was grainy even as a slide film. So the Peacock X-Pro is actually a better print film than it is a slide film. Um, the colors do come out a little bit weird. Uh, the emulsion after you process it in C41 is pretty purple, but without any adjustments other than whatever the Canon scanner software was doing, I really didn't have to dork with the colors that much. It was not these crazy, wild, you know, hipster uh, cross-processing colors. The colors weren't bad. They were as good as they were when I processed the last roll in proper E6 slide chemicals. So anyway, I'm going to grab me some uh, black and white Orca because I've got a couple of other decent 110 cameras and those I can use uh, my trusty HC110 black and white chemicals. Ta-da! It's magic. Now it has a flash. So um, I have a couple more Canons, different kinds of cameras. It just worked out that way. Um, I actually have another body of this, and I swapped them back and forth with the film to test them both while I was uh, shooting with 110. One, I got the bare body with a strap. The other one, I got the nice box with the flash, the flash extender. Originally, it even came with a battery, got the manuals and all of that. So, anyway, I'm going to try and get caught up so it's not so long between episodes, and I will see you then. <laughs>